this tutorial we're actually going to do secondary color correction. So we've applied the three-way color corrector. Before that we've also got a fast color corrector which basically dealt with all sorts of issues with regards to white balance and contrast. We did a little bit of movement for the skin tones with the second fast color corrector that we applied and now we've got a three-way color corrector. We've had a brief look at what the three-way color corrector can do and now we're going to open up this tab that says secondary color correction. Now the idea behind secondary color correction is that we are going to create a mask around the items that we need to deal with. There are some reds in here that we can see quite clearly from our vector scope that are beyond broadcast safe. And I suspect that those reds are not just the teapot but even this little red thing over here and possibly even the lettering on some of these books. So what we need to do is get this red reduced down so that it is less saturated and is a lot safer. So what we need to do is select these reds to create a mask. Now at the moment it says show mask and if I click show mask you'll see that everything's white and what that's telling us is that should we go to the saturation tab here and start to reduce saturation every single pixel will be affected. So I'm going to turn off the show mask and I'm going to start selecting the color. Now I've got a color swatch so I could just click in the color swatch and try and match the color but much better than to use these three pickers. Notice I've got a main picker and then I've got a plus picker and a minus picker. So I can select a color and I can add to that color and if I've got too much I can even take it away. And also we've got lots of other sliders down here which we're going to play with a bit later on just to get the right balance. So I'm going to take the main picker to start with and I'm going to say this is the red that I pretty much want to deal with. And it's given me some red and if I click the show mask now you can see that well all of this is going to be affected with the odd dot here and there. So those are the only colors that are being affected we haven't got a really good range on this teapot yet. So let's turn the mask off and let's take the add button and add say one of the ones here. Now let's see if that's made much of a difference. Yes that's made quite a lot of difference actually. We can see we've got a lot of them. Maybe let's look at adding some of the ones up here. So let's turn off show mask. So we think some of the ones around here maybe. So let's click the plus button and go and select around here. And then show mask again. And yes we've added an awful lot with that particular one. We're even beginning to bring in some of the other problem areas. I think actually we've got a problem down here. So I'm just going to not show mask and yeah we need to get the color right in the middle there as well so I'm going to actually add plus here and click right in the middle of that area there just there and let's show mask again yep we've got most of that and we've got most of this now what we need to do is see if we can just bring in the rest through some of these sliders first thing to do is open up the hue and this is the range that we have selected and you can see the range here at the bottom and it's between these two square blocks so if I pull these square blocks apart I'm going to be bringing in a greater range of colors and this is the fall off so if you like this is a hundred percent at the end of this little triangle it'll be zero both ways so if you don't want to change the range but you want to increase the fall off you can pull those out and see if that has some effect that's increasing things a bit yet it's bringing a little bit more in or if you want to you can even pull these two apart don't pull them out so far that you start to bring in all kinds of colors from other bits and pieces but we aren't bringing in anything that we don't want so just playing with those is actually giving us a pretty good mask actually. Now the issue that we've got I think is going to be luminance. If I just turn the mask off a minute you'll see that right in the middle we've got some real blown out highlights here and what we need to do is not just think about the hue range but also the luminance range. So I'm going to turn on the mask again and I'm going to go down to luminance and I'm going to just increase the luminant range and see if we pull more in and we'll begin to pull things over there let's just check and see if we're okay with pulling those in or not don't really want to pull those in so maybe reduce that a little bit again and pull the this other side out let's see that is that going to increase yes that's actually brought more in by pulling in the luminance down a bit that's pulling in more for us so I think that's going to be quite a good choice to pull the luminance down that side what if we pull the fall off for the luminance at the top it's going to start bringing in stuff again no 
So that's about right for us. That's about the maximum we're going to get. We can play with saturation. So we've got a saturation of colour that we've included. We can increase the range of saturation of our colour and see if that brings in more or less. We've certainly got pretty much all of this little label and most of the lettering on these books. So we're trying to bring in saturation. Now that brought in a great deal by pulling in the saturation. Let's see if we pull it a bit more. Yeah, we're beginning to pull in a lot, but we're also bringing in some other bits and pieces. So maybe what we would do is pull that back in a bit and pull out the fall off a little bit. Just to bring in as much as we can without overdoing it. You can see we're bringing in items here. So let's just turn off the mask, double check. What are we bringing in? And yeah, we're beginning to bring in different colours altogether there. So I'm going to actually reduce that saturation again. I don't really want all of that. Okay, so I think we've got about the most that we can pull in with the saturation without pulling in things that we don't want to pull in. So we've pulled out the hue, we've got the saturation, the luminance, and now we've got something called soften. And soften is effectively a blur. It kind of blurs it and smooths it out a bit. So you don't want much. They've got up to 50 here, but to be honest with you, you're not going to pull it out much more than one, to be honest. Let's say 1.2, give it a moment, and you can see that that's blurred it quite considerably. I might even take that down. In fact, I'll click in here and do it 0.75 and see what that's like. 0.75. Yeah, that's a bit better. I want a little bit of a blur because get the edges a little bit softer. But notice we've even got edge thinning down here. So we can pull edge thinning out and see if that has much of an effect on the whole thing. It doesn't make a massive difference, but it's just a little bit of something extra to play around with. There we go. So this is how we can build our mask up so that these are the areas that will only be affected and then if we wanted to we could even invert it so if we've selected the one thing that we don't want to be changed so say I didn't want this red to be desaturated but I wanted everything else to be desaturated I could invert it, invert the mask and now the red will be completely unaffected but if I wanted to desaturate everything else I could do and that would give you the, the Schindler's List girl in the red dress effect although there are other tools to do that um, but you could do it that way if you wanted right now that I've done that and I've got my mask I can turn off the mask I don't need to see it and I can go to my saturation tab and I've got my master saturation here which I've untwirled and I can pull down the master saturation and you'll find that it will only affect the area that has been affected with the mask so if I let go Give it a moment to find itself and you can see there it goes it's pulled it right down and we're beginning to pull it right down here in the vector scope as well you'll see that if I pull it down that red is becoming less and less of an issue as we've gone right down here so that's how we can create a mask now that's too much I'm obviously I've pulled it right down so probably want to have a little bit of it left so they've got a little bit of color but it's certainly going to be safe that's the important thing broadcast safe and if you want to see how you've affected it remember you've always got the FX switch so before and after before and after you can look at the vector scope before and after you can see what difference we're making with playing around with these colors so that's secondary color correction creating a mask and then finessing that mask inside the three-way color corrector and there are a few other effects that also offer a secondary color correction we'll be having a look at a few more color correction effects in the upcoming tutorials.